Okay, it's good to see more people joining in. Um, just for everyone who's just joined, um, this session is uh, going to be interactive. So feel free to ask questions in the chat. And as promised, it's our series of dissect a successful Dash app. So it could be NYU's turn this week. Uh, we're planning another one next week uh, with uh, admit who made it to UC Berkeley. So it's going to be fun to keep doing these. So keep sending in encouragements or even suggestions and comments and questions you have my way. I'll leave my email ID in the chat and feel free to reach out to me. Uh, so Udhav, to tell us a little bit about you and let's do introductions once again. So tell me, uh, what was it like growing up in Chennai and then going to Shisha and then applying to NYU? How did it all pan out in like a two minute pitch? <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, uh, growing up in Chennai was, was really nice. It's a very, now that I think about it, a very small, closed community, even though it's a big city. And uh, it's almost like, you know, growing up in a, in a small city or a suburb rather than growing up in a big city. And coming to New York was wholly different. And about me, I mean, well, I, I'm with her. I, I go to uh, NYU before that. I was in Chennai. I have a deep passion for um, business, entrepreneurship, finance, things along those lines. And even um, psychology. I love watching a lot of sports, F1, um, UFC, basketball, so on. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty much... <laughs> yeah, sounds like a pretty normal, fun kid who loves business. <laughs> yeah. Let's so, <laughs> so a little bit more about um, uh, your journey in uh, understanding business. Were you surrounded with business in the family yeah. environment? And uh, how did you think of the idea of starting your own venture while in high school? Yeah, so for me, it was always that uh, my I come from like a family who runs a family business. So my granddad started it and my dad takes it forward. And, you know, uh, growing up in the house, I would always uh, like the conversations in the house are always around what's happening in the family business. So even from a young age, I was always sitting and hearing my uh, parents, and my grandparents, you know, talk about what's happening and and that's sort of how my interest grew it's like sort of the only thing I would I would talk about for a long period of time when I was young with my parents and um, I mean it, it's sort of like I never found anything more interesting I never looked back like uh, that's just how I how I grew up and um, from a very early age because of that I had a sort of set path uh, that I was like okay you know I, I want to do business so it wasn't really hard for me to um, you know, start my own business or even, you know, have the idea of starting my own business is just about, you know, finding something that I thought was feasible. And so what I was able to do was, um, you know, leverage my dad's capabilities of his business. And I, I sort of, I was like, okay, he has his business, but there are certain things he, he isn't doing. Let, let me do them instead. Cause I know he's going to do it. Uh, so that's sort of how I got started with my own business. And, uh, in general, because of being from that family business background, uh, that's what sort of like um, gave me my interest in the whole field. Fantastic. So I know this journey of applying to colleges and that's what we'll be dissecting, you know, uh, your application. Yeah. In some certain parts so the word dissecting sounds a little intimidating, but <laughs> the idea is to make it a bit... Uh, catchy and get the audiences to involve and engage with you. So uh, what was it like thinking when we, when, we, when we met, I think you were in 10th grade or closing like yeah. of 10th grade. Uh, what was it back then? What was going on in your mind uh, about co the college application process? And then how did it pan out for you in terms of learning different uh, aspects of what could be special about your candidature and different parts of the common application and finally culminating. Right. Uh, so, I mean, initially when I met it, it's, it's actually quite funny is uh, I wanted to do uh, science, right? The first time I met you, I wanted to do science. And then I wrote my board exams and then for 11th grade uh, ISC, I had to choose between commerce and science. And, uh, you know, I, I chose uh, uh, commerce so sort of that was my first step towards my whole college application, because when you take a field like commerce, obviously it did it because I was interested in business. When you take um, 
a field like commerce, you literally cannot apply for science, right? You don't have any physics, uh, chemistry, biology in your curriculum. You have to, by then, sort of the decision was already made that, you know, I want to I wanna pursue uh, business. So that's sort of how, uh, you know, the college journey towards business started. And, and back then, uh, once I decided I wanted to do business, for me, it was all about building an application to show that, you know, I can be a very good business student, not necessarily student, but specifically follow a theme of, uh, you know, business throughout my application. And that's something not clever, but I think it was uh, by design, but also a very informed choice that you tried uh, to sort of present yourself through right. the PD section in your essay and uh, the NYU specific supplement prompts. So we'll, we'll go over some of those. And I think um, that's where the meat of the discussion is today. But just to let everyone know, we also have Samira Nanda, who's uh, 2025 admit to NYU Stern, a student I worked with this past year. Um, would love to have met you more, Samira, but because of COVID, of course, a lot of the action was virtual in terms of going back and forth with essays and frantic <laughs> phone conversations about, is this essay going to work? <laughs> yeah. All of that. So welcome. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you. Yeah, so you know, I'd love to hear you ask questions to Udhav also, and uh, and the fun part of today's discussion could be more than just looking at his application. We can also talk about resources that he's kind of found useful at NYU. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, those questions could be great for you to ask. Okay, yeah. let's jump straight in. I'm going to share my screen, and so give me a minute. Uh, meanwhile, if you want to, yeah, just chat. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, sure. So how's it going? Um, how, have, how are the classes and everything? Right. So, I mean, classes are good. Um, at first year, uh, NYU, um, at least Stern, isn't that bad. It's not that hard. Sort of very general classes. But from the, from the second year, like sophomore year, especially sophomore spring, that's yeah. when you know, classes really kick in and that's when you're doing, you know, the more interesting stuff like uh, valuation, marketing, accounting, and so on. So that's where like the business side of it really kicks in. I mean, the first year so far has been more just general. Okay. Okay, good. And how about, how was the transition, you know, as an ISC Indian student to the curriculum, to the Stern curriculum? Right. I mean, it, it wasn't, necessarily the easiest transition because ISC, right, uh, it all comes down to one exam. Uh, when you're, you know, uh, in college, you have to be much, much more consistent with your work. I had to learn how to submit homeworks on time. I had to learn how to do my assignments on time, work on collaborative group projects. And I think the main skill that I, I found myself lacking that ISC didn't teach me was writing. Yeah. I mean, writing uh, essays for college is one thing, but actually writing essays in or at college, like, you know, 2000 word papers, that's a whole, whole different beast. And, and tackling that, my first few papers, that was a, a very big hurdle I had to overcome. And, uh, you know, it took me a whole semester to get comfortable with actually academic writing. Okay. I think, Arjun, you can take over yeah, now. Sure. Yeah, I think... Um... Um, we'll learn more about your experiences at NYU and uh, uh, let's move on to understanding what you put in your common app and uh, some of the rationale behind uh, behind doing that and also choosing. So for instance, uh, in the common app, if everyone knows there is uh, a demographic section, the family section, there's a school section, that's more like clerical information. You just type in data. And then there's uh, the section where you put in points from your resume, which is called the activities page. That's what's showing up on the screen right now. Uh, we'll go over that. Then we'll also go over the personal essay, which is uh, an interesting insight into who you are as a person. For someone who's half the way across the world, it's very hard to know what's it like being you. And uh, we'll quickly read your essay and maybe have a few questions from the audience too about, about that. Uh, finally, we'll go over the NYU supplement, uh, which is 
why NYU or certain features of NYU, how will you succeed in NYU and uh, such that. So that's really interesting. And I really loved what you did with that essay. It really shows that you put an effort to understand what will make you tick when you get there. Um, mm -hmm. So let's first talk about the aspect in general about the admissions process. A college is a place where you go to study. And academics, of course, is really important. Uh, so rigor of your curriculum, and I know choosing commerce sometimes uh, is uh, con counterproductive for that because many schools, even if you're applying to business schools, have admitted kids who do science. Apparently, science is considered more rigorous because you put in many more hours of work uh, and all of that. Though business in India, the CBSE and ISC does have math, economics, uh, English, some of these uh, rigorous courses in any in any case. Uh, but the accounting and commerce and business studies courses aren't considered as rigorous. Uh, so of course, making that choice with her, you made that. In getting grades, I know you mentioned <laughs> offline that um, you were not very happy with your grades and you had to do I something they, different. They weren't the best in the class. Right. Uh, but one thing that did, I mean, if I'm being completely honest, help was at least my school they showed class average uh, nearby, right? And, and commerce just happens to be, um, you know, uh, not as competitive and uh, as, as science. Science is where everyone would go, you know, whoever wanted to, to get into all these universities and, and I was in commerce. And, and so although my grades weren't objectively the best, uh, I mean, compared to the class average, they looked way better. And, um, you know, obviously added to that the rigor of the curriculum. So that was, I would say, the sort of, if I had to choose like myself what I would consider the weakest part of my application, it would be that, especially because nowadays, you know, um, I'm on a whole bunch of like credit forums and stuff. And you see all of these, all of these kids with literally straight A's throughout high school. And they also have everything else. So that's why I would say, you know, it wasn't my strongest. Yeah, but if you look at uh, what you did and showed initiative was taking what, four AP exams and getting five B yeah. and even computer science, like, um, yeah, so that, that showed like going mm. deep, yeah, natural sort of interest areas and then going deeper into that even later in, in your internships and um, the venture yeah. with Amazon and analyzing all the data of what you were selling, how you were selling. So it's interesting that um, you challenged yourself after realizing that maybe the initial school, high school year grades were not that great. So right. super, let's move on to activities. And clearly um, there are trends here. There's, mm -hmm. there, there's not just in terms of starting new things and starting ventures, but also in terms of, you know, getting involved in business clubs, uh, even starting an MIT launch club. But looking back, what do you value most about your extracurriculars? What are the three things you would pick and why? Okay, so definitely uh, my uh, business is the first one, mm -hmm. uh, which is the Outback Lab company. So if you could scroll up and then, yeah. So essentially that was really, you know, the project that I spent the most time on. That's where I actually set up uh, a whole business by myself. And it's the one thing I would value most because A, I feel like that really showed the entrepreneurial side of me. It showed like my business interest, but it also taught me today everything I know about business from, you know, when you do things yourself, it's a, it's a whole different uh, experience than just reading, uh, you know, something from a book. And um, that whole experience over like 11th and 12th grade, like it says here, you know, 20 hours a week, <laughs> but I, I would say I probably spent more than 20 hours a week, uh, you know, on that project. At, at one point, that was like all I would do. And so that was definitely the first one. Uh, a second one would be a business club. So business club is something that I actually took a lot of interest in. Uh, so my school had a business club. I joined it. I was a member for a year. And um, then I became president of it eventually in 12th grade. And um, it, it's sort of the way the business club was handed down to me. Uh, you know, my teachers told me, you know, it's up to you to, to sort of, you know, make it happen and, you know, 
really build up the business club back again because it had it had fallen for a decent amount and that's something i took a lot of interest in i was able to bring in like it says here two for ups 30 under 30 asia members i was able to uh, you know organize a talk with uh, carrot lane which is a pretty big company uh, so that and you know that was very interactive we had like 40 50 students sign up that was a very very fun and enjoyable thing to do as well and the last thing honestly would be uh, basketball so i mean sport is something that i've always uh, been passionate about and i think it's it's a very important part of an application because it just uh, you know, when you play a sport, there are so many things that come along with it. You learn, you have to learn teamwork, you have to learn discipline, you have to learn, uh, you know, how to listen to other people in terms of, you know, what your coach says is fine. You can't argue with the coach. And so, uh, you know, basketball, it, I've played it for pretty much all my life. And that was something I, I really, really value now that I think about it. Fantastic. You know, I think going into looking at it through the eyes of an admissions counselor, I see the details in the way you wrote your activity section. That's really interesting. It's not just, oh, I started this business and it was selling wallets on Amazon, but it was also like the profit. And then the additional information section showed the detail in which you sort of worked to set that up. Um, the second, even everything that you've written, there is there is some impact, right? Like even the founder and editor of Amazon Fluent, an article you wrote on the blog on Amazon India had 13,000 views and that's pretty amazing. Um, right. So then even small details of, you know, participating in business club and MIT launch activities, the people you called for the talk, the small details that really hook hook and admissions office saying, hmm, so he knows not just uh, uh, what he's doing, but also clearly has a way to show impact. Uh, so that was great. Uh, moving on, I think there's more to his uh, activities, which you can glance through. Everyone in the audience could do that. What do you think of doing online courses, though? This is always this thing about establishing rigor, but also showing depth in what you like to study in the future right. and sort of indicate your interest in business. And just to qualify, you know, since you applied and you were very focused on business school towards 12th grade, uh, it clearly helped in your case to show that continuous spike. And even the community service activity that you had was really informing and making uh, uh, this village women community in Rajasthan sort of a self-help group be able to market and finance their produce uh, better. Yeah. So I think everything somehow showed entrepreneurial zeal. And uh, even though very often it's like people think it's a formula that, oh, you need to have a community service initiative or you need to do an academic research paper. But it just sort of, in your case, it fell in a very natural way and not forced. So yeah, so uh, basically, you know, when I was thinking about college apps, right? Uh, and again, I'm just being completely honest here. Um, you know, I knew that colleges care about some form of community service. And, and you know, I was speaking to my friends and, and you know, what most of them do is, uh, you know, they sort of volunteer at these organizations where they're going and physically volunteering. And uh, it, it's just something that, you know, I could see myself do and I even tried to do it, but it's, it, I just couldn't give the time commitment where I felt like, you know, A, this is something I've had a real impact on and I really, really deeply care about and be like, you know, it just wouldn't be something that I would feel comfortable putting on a, on a college application necessarily. So uh, what I then did was I was like, okay, I want to do community service and I have this other area, like I'm interested in, you know, business finance and so on. So why, why don't I merge the two together? So if you scroll up, Arjun, there's this thing called FinMango. Right. So this is actually so interesting because it, it's it's an NGO that does financial literacy. Right. And so by partnering with the NGO, not only do I show commitment towards community service, but I do care about the community. It's also in an area I feel passionate about. I feel everyone should be financially literate. They should know how to do their own taxes. They should know, you know, like what return on investment means and so on. And this this is just the perfect combination. And I felt it was just so me like I, I was just being you know i was very happy doing um community service with finmango it didn't feel like uh, work 
So yeah, and with online courses, I mean, uh, I think some people tend to look at online courses necessarily like sometimes in the wrong way. Uh, do an online course like I I think that you know you like and and do try to really get the most out of that course even like for what it is like financial markets the Yale course taught by a, a professor who's won a Nobel Prize in economics Professor Schiller and I did the course and it like today I know so much because of that course it's actually a very very good course and then having the duality of being able to list that on my application obviously really really helps and again strengthens my whole interest towards towards finance and shows that I could do a course that's uh, taught by Yale University. Okay, great. So let's move on to uh, writing and um, just to give a very quick intro on the personal essays. Like I was saying, for a person half the, half the way across the world reading your application, uh, they get to see your achievements. They also get to see what teachers have to say about you. Uh, but what they don't know is it what is it like being you or what are the experiences that have really shaped you or accomplishments and achievements this year on the common app they've added another essay which is really about gratitude and i think it's obviously influenced by the situation and covid like how to be more grateful to uh, towards people or towards certain experiences and privileges that you might have uh, and it's a very nice prompt and we'll probably do another session just on essay writing and invite everyone here uh, for that but to talk about choosing a topic uh, it's it's it could be really difficult for a teenager who thinks has a normal average life to pick a topic how was it for you with her when i know we went back and forth even on this essay maybe 100 drafts i don't know <laughs> you probably have the count right it it, it took me around uh, three or four months i think i i went through three different or two different essays altogether, like completely different uh, essays. And then I wrote this essay. And, and I mean, the f like picking a topic uh, is hard enough, but <laughs> deciding which essay to write is, is also equally hard. But yeah, I, I think, um, you know, uh, this, this essay about, you know, personal growth, I feel like personal growth is such a, uh, is a topic that sometimes you need to be vulnerable about because you need to really put your you need to show your mistakes and sometimes that's, that's not an easy thing to do like you know just admit the fact that you've made a mistake and and for something like this you know this essay is again about basketball something i i really really care about because uh, i was actually dropped from my uh, school team for a year because uh, you know i made a lot of mistakes now that i think about it and um i i then came back and made it next year and then I made it to the state team next year so that sort of whole journey was sort of you know one of like the most important journeys for me like throughout high school and so you know choosing personal growth uh, you know made a lot of sense because that's that's like one thing you know that stuck out to me as one of like the things I've overcome in my life uh, was being dropped from the basketball team and uh, you know getting getting to the state team the next year so that that was uh you know sort of yeah. the whole personal that's growth definitely the kind of simple narrative but there's a lot more going on in this essay and I'd yeah right for sure so there's this whole element of uh, connecting with people who are older forming this nightball whatsapp group and being part of that mm -hmm. uh, and of course there's the learnings and the sort of gratitude towards uh, people that yeah. are in such sort of comes through. So I'm going to leave everyone uh, here to read this essay for a few minutes, maybe three minutes. And um, then we can even have people raise their hands and ask questions. <laughs> It'll be fun to have that chat or just put questions in the chat. So we just stay for a few minutes and read. <laughs>
All right, so um, I'm assuming everyone's read through. Um, if you haven't, you can continue reading while we begin the conversation. Uh, so, you know, I think the essay is a lot more than just realizing a mistake. Is those details that give us uh, uh, an insight into the way you think and how you've grown as a person. Very often, uh, our own self-worth, self-esteem is kind of impacted when we make mistakes, uh, but it's the way you rebound and form relationships and connect with yourself. And that's a very important relationship to have with yourself and then to even uh, expand that to more people around you. Uh, so uh, feel free to ask questions, but Udha, what do you think? Because there are so many characters in this essay, right? So there's the detail about not just the coach, um, um, kicking you out of the team, <laughs> not because you were a bad player, but a bad team member. <laughs> but yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, reading this essay honestly uh, <laughs> uh, made me miss this group so much. Uh, I feel like, um, honestly, in, in terms of you know the the common app and college perspective, I really try to show. You know, I feel like a lot of my um, other stuff was lacking. Uh, you know, I'm a very social person. I don't know if you can tell, but uh, uh, I feel like all of my other stuff that I'm submitting to college just did not, you know, bring that personality trait of mine through. And I really try to show that, you know, through this essay that, you know, uh, I, I formed relationships with these guys like Abhishek, Sanjay, um, so many of these guys and um, you know that I I learned from them I helped them too it is sort of a two-way relationship uh, you know that uh, we had and it was not just limited to basketball it was like basketball is what brought us together but even though we met to play basketball I could sort of take our relationship outside of just the sport and you know uh, really form a relationship with them as, as people, especially with uh, um, Sanjay, who I found a, a new uh, business mentor through. And um, through the whole thing, right in the beginning, it says, uh, it, it also has the whole personal growth narrative of it, where, you know, I did get dropped from the team and, and sort of night ball is what helped me, you know, really rebuild my confidence and stuff like that back. And so I, I think, in that sense, uh, I, I think I did a good job uh, with this essay. It, it took a long amount of time to, you know, really uh, narrow it down because there's so there are so many relationships and so much that I wanted to write about. In fact, for me with this essay, I always had a problem of, you know, I would take up too many words rather than too few words and uh, narrowing it down to, the, you know, the really important aspects of the whole journey. Um, showed me as a social person, showed me as a person who could grow. It, it really, I feel it also sometimes gives an insight, you know, into my mind because I, I feel like uh, I'm just sort of talking through what's happening, right? Like I, I, I did not pass the ball enough. And then, you know, on after that, he's like, Abhishek's telling me, you will make the next shot and how that affects my mindset. So um, I feel like it, it's just a very honest essay in that perspective. Great. I think it's so important to uh, touch upon this. Um, it's An essay is not just a place where you brag because the rest of your application is actually doing it. And if you have that growth journey, which need not necessarily be a failure, but still showing growth uh, and sharing those uh, vulnerable moments, I think it definitely helps. Even weaknesses or things that you learn about people that might impact you could be an essay too. So go beyond the scope of um, just understanding that an essay is where you want to impress the admissions officer. You can impress them with the quality of your writing, but a story needs to definitely be personal. And that's where uh, the reason why it's underscored there as an essay topic needs to be uh, something that they get informed about your life and who you are as an individual. So moving on, I think, the next essay, which is your YNYU essay, broadly speaking, it's a bigger prompt, but we'll just, for the sake of it, just call it YNYU. Uh, 
this um, is very well written compared to the other essays I've seen over a period of time. Given the fact that you were very pointed in your approach and you were applying to Stern, the business school there, it, uh, it made sense to have each paragraph sort of link to the idea of entrepreneurial spirit, business and finance and everything else. So walk us through this in the way you were thinking of writing this and uh, what do you think uh, some of the sections of this essay really did? Right. So one of the, one of the things I, I really wanted to show through this essay was that, uh, you know, I read somewhere that essays often, I, I really basically wanted to show how Stern's going to impact me today and tomorrow. But, you know, what a lot of people forget, that I feel the today aspect. Like what I try to show is that if I go to Stern, you know, here's how it's going to impact the activities that I'm currently doing. And so that's how like sort of the first paragraph starts off. You know, it's, it's more about my like leather accessories business and how if I go to CERN, I can take advantage of the resources they have to directly benefit that business. And then it sort of grows from there to how it can benefit me tomorrow. And then it go grows from there to how um, CERN can help me, you know, explore some unexplored areas of interest. So that's sort of, you know, the whole, you know, the larger picture of the essay. So the first two paragraphs, like you can see, it's about, um, my business so how this class uh, i really want to take this class i didn't get it this semester so i'm taking next semester decision making under uncertainty uncertainty and uh, the foodborne center is actually also really good but this this seminar did happen this year uh the next paragraph so this entrepreneurship like on the on the second page um so it's basically about you know entrepreneurship and how i'm interested in entrepreneurship I wake up every day thinking about how to develop effective solutions to various problems. So this is about tomorrow. Uh, I look at the Stern Entrepreneurship Exchange Group as a scaled up representation of my school's business club. So this is sort of, again, relating back uh, the two as well. Uh, Entrepreneurship Exchange Group is something that I am now part of. So, you know, everything in this essay was again, very, very personal. Um, I really did a lot, a lot, a lot of research to write this essay to see how I can connect it to me today and to me tomorrow. And, um, you know, then there's a paragraph about real estate. Uh, I, I know absolutely nothing about real estate, but it's always something I was, I was really interested in. And so I wrote a paragraph, you know, about how it can explore me, uh, help me explore my interests. So about real estate and at Stern, uh, Professor Arpit Gupta's class on real estate capital markets. And, um, you know, this is one of my, the ending is one of my uh, favorite uh, essay endings I've written. Um, NYU will give me the perfect opportunity to explore my passion for business in an interactive social environment. Where Thiru Kumar's famous dosa truck is not only a place to eat food from my hometown <laughs> with my intramural basketball buddies, but is also a mobile business with no employees operating in one of the most expensive cities in the world. So this sort of last paragraph I think it's the perfect representation of like how, like my brain and who, who I am as a person, right? There are two aspects to it. Like on one end is this, is this dosa truck and, you know, I can hang out there with my friends, have a lot of fun, eat, eat dosa. It's, it's a very famous dosa truck. It's been on multiple news channels. And on the other end, it's, you know, looking at just that entity as a business and, uh, you know, that, that just sort of that one paragraph is just, you know, the perfect uh, summary, I think. So that, that's sort of, you know, my YNYU essay. I think this is the essay that I put a, a lot of research into because when you look into colleges, you should, you can look into their curriculum, you can look into their classes, you can talk to people from the university and you can really find these little like hidden gems of classes, of um, you know, different centers. If you're applying to a big university, they definitely, definitely, definitely have. Like they're full of these little things that you know just are unknown to the to the outside world because they they aren't famous, but they certainly make up a big part of the university. So something like the Entrepreneurship Exchange Group, right? It's 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 a club within Stern that only has like ten people, but to be able to find that and then link that back to say my school's business club. That is something that took like really in-depth research. 
because not only do I have to look at what, okay, first I got to search clubs, then I got to go through each club's description and really understand what it's about before I can make a claim. Like, you know, it's, it's like my business club. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's, that's the key here. And uh, very often students write formula essays, why NYU, why Wharton, why whatever, uh, X school. And you can clearly see it, the, the research doesn't tie in with anything that they stand for beyond like just surface level mentioning of what they found in a few minutes of research interesting. And that's like a disaster for failure. Uh, the YSA does become really important in a committee meeting where you know your file is read by an admissions officer who's advocating your case, that essay becomes the most important point where there could be another student who has better grades or maybe appears to be having way more better extracurriculars or marginally better extracurriculars. When it comes to a tiebreaker, it's this essay that is discussed in the committee room. So uh, clearly do focus. And I think this is a great example. If, if you guys want to take a snapshot, go ahead. It's just a perfect example of how to show that you're clever because in business, you need to be clever too. And, uh, and at the same time, be relatable and fun as an individual because business is all about relationships and actually everything, any, any, any field that you get into uh, will be. Uh, but it clearly shows your personality and the way you think and uh, how cleverly, interestingly, <laughs> interesting would be a better way, I would say, better word, I would say. So, uh, Fantastic. I think this is a sample I would use uh, at any point with any student to go over. That's pretty much it. There's another section, which is the additional information page, which basically lists more details from your resume, but we will leave that for now and let um, in Samira ask you a few questions about um, how it actually panned out. Like, do you think um, thinking about college versus being there became really uh, 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 something which was disconnected you feel that maybe it wasn't what you thought it should be or better or worse or or just different uh, any any other question but maybe you could start with that uh Udav. i mean uh so now now that you asked me now that i got here what do i think right so honestly the first thing is i am actually a very very grateful to nyu that they could actually have an in-person semester like last year fall uh, because most universities did not have an in-person semester and they had online and I was able to come here and have an in-person semester so uh, you know obviously given COVID it's a whole different uh, you know it's sort of an unseen circumstance where like the second uh, semester ever with COVID right and so you know people have um, I had no idea what to expect uh, being honest, I've, I've been to New York once when I was younger and all I remember was just full of people and then I came here in COVID and well, there was like comparatively nobody. So, um, you know, I didn't know what to expect. So I will say that it is also sort of what you make of it. Uh, I was here, I, I unlike other people who are doing it online, I still had the opportunity to be in a dorm to interact with like, you know, all these people. Um, our buildings were open so we could go in there and we had like a couple in-person classes here and there so from that perspective uh, you know it was it was really good it was definitely uh, you know not what other people's freshman years looked like but to have a freshman year you know in the middle of a pandemic in one of possibly the most affected cities is uh, like this was was really uh, surprising to say the least that they managed to pull it off so you know for me it's 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 all smiles there's no real disappointment uh even the city has been um, back i mean another thing i, I will add is because i've only realized this now is um the city does make i feel a big difference and you know nyu advocates all about being in new york it's like you know they say new york city is our campus and at least for NYU, that is true. You're, you're definitely more a student of the city than you're a student of the school. And, um, you know, the city now bouncing back has, has definitely made this experience like way, way better. Fantastic. Over to you, Samira. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think one part of the application that we haven't spoken about are recommendations, LORs. 
Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, would you have any, any tips or any advice? Okay. So the first thing I would say, and I, I am just really happy I did this, is uh, choose teachers you are actually close to and you actually have a bonding with and you actually like no matter what they do. Like for me, so I am like one out of three students in my school who didn't go to the principal for a counselor LOR. And in retrospect, it's the best thing I did because I didn't really have a good relationship with the principal. That's a long story. But um, by choosing the teachers that I liked and I had a close bonding and relationship with, it really comes through in the LORs that they wrote for me, you know, that they, they genuinely like liked me and wanted me to go to this university. So that I think that's the first thing because then, then they could really give personal stories about me, about me in the classroom, about, so my counselor, LOR, there's a counselor LOR and teacher LOR. The teacher writes about the, the classroom, the counselor writes about your whole, uh, you in school, basically. For both, uh, you know, there were a lot of personal anecdotes and I feel that's missing from a lot of LORs. So, you know, choosing teachers that you actually like and actually taking the time and effort to form a connection with your teachers, not only for the sake of LORs, but also because, you know, they're great, great resources, they're teachers at the end of the day, they care for you. But when it comes to LORs, if you have those really good relationships and you choose those te teachers, I, you know, then you, you can obviously even be in a position to, to nudge them in certain directions. Like I could tell my teacher, you know, I know you're writing my LOR. I know I'm not supposed to see it, but you know, uh, can you do this or can you do that? Can you write about this? Can you write about this person's story? I mean, can I have a sneak peek here or there? So, uh, you know, having that relationship with your teachers and then choosing them, that's, I think, the, the best thing you can do, personally. Okay, great. I also had wonderful teachers. Okay, that's great. Um, I think we've covered almost every aspect of the application now. Um, so we can talk a little bit more about NYU. So I think internships are a very important learning experience. How do you think NYU has helped, um, you know, in, in finding internships and your experience with that till now? Okay, so honestly, uh, like for NYU particularly, uh, in, in the US, it's kind of hard to find internships, especially freshman year. Uh, but NYU as a university and especially, especially Stern, what they do is if you're interested in finance, they have clubs, right? And uh, every single week, Monday through Thursday, uh, 12.30 to 1.45 p.m., they bring people from all sorts of organizations to come and talk. And not only do these people offer insights, sometimes they offer internships. So, you know, what are these companies? So uh, the real estate group can bring in anything from like the city, city bank real estate to, um, you know, even other like, you know, niche real estate companies. We have management consulting group. That's the biggest club. They bring in like uh, Price Waterhouse Coopers, Ernst & Young, Deloitte, all the big uh, consulting and accounting firms. We have anything from Google to Facebook come in. So from that perspective, NYU is full of resources. It's sort of what more like what you do with it because every week, no matter where your interest lies, if you're interested in um, luxury and fashion, we have people from Hublot and like, you know, these different brands come in and talk as well. So um, NYU is full of resources. It's, it's sort of more like, you know, how you sort of use them to get internships. And another thing at NYU, networking is a big deal. Like you really need to know uh, how to network because again your NYU is not a, a campus community community it's a city uh, city school and you're in the city there, there isn't really a defined campus it's a bunch of buildings so you really have to put yourself out there um, you know approach people meet people you have to take the first step yourself and then uh, you know you can you can see results for sure Okay, that was pretty insightful. Thank you. Um, I'm good as anyone in the audience have a question. Let's, let's open it up to everyone. Uh, we haven't seen questions in the chat, so feel free to do that or even uh, uh, unmute yourself and ask a question. It'll be fun to hear a few more people. 
Okay, in the meanwhile, while you're thinking about questions, uh, I'm going to share my screen and talk about our upcoming events. Um, next Friday, we have a college fair, which is uh, kind of a regular fair that we've been doing in the last six, uh, six months, or rather last 12 months, but six times. And it's been a super hit where top colleges like Brown, Carnegie Mellon, Emory, Vanderbilt, some of the most leading liberal arts colleges have participated. So I'll share my screen and uh, walk you through the website. There are many resources out there. There are session recordings from what to expect in terms of changes due to COVID or how the application review is changing as well. Uh, there are master classes on essay writing uh, from different admissions officers, even vice presidents of uh, leading universities. So feel free to register. You can get to meet other students, meet educators, parents are welcome. I'm not sure if there are parents on this forum today, but uh, feel free to browse through our website. It's called collegefair.live. And our next event is on Friday, coming Friday at 6 p.m. and will end at 9 p.m. So there'll be more information about the fair on the website and there's a registration page. It's absolutely free as all our events are. So feel free to connect and uh, meet with admissions reps. Uh, Arjun, so Dia has a question for me. Okay. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'll just read it out. I was wondering how easy was it for you to network with your professors given the pandemic, as well as the fact that NYU is a huge school. Have you been able to connect with any of them? How helpful has it been in transition to uni? Okay, so first of all, um, let, let me uh, tell you something. Professors, at the end of the day, that they're, they're like your friends, right? I mean, they teach you, they teach you classes, but at the end of the day, they're just like, you know, any other person, they're very chill, very chilled out, like insanely chilled out. You can talk to them about anything. Like, um, they have office hours. So uh, when they're not teaching throughout the week, they'll have uh, two to four hours where they're just on a Zoom call, literally waiting for anybody to come and talk to them. And especially if you're in a class, they'll have particular office hours for those classes. So if you make use of these office hours or just shoot a professor an email, like I did this for all my professors, every time I started the class, so beginning of each semester, I would literally shoot the professor an email and be like, hey, like, you know, I wanna get to know you better. Can we schedule a 30 minute call? And they would always schedule it like within the week and you can just talk to them and you can talk to them about anything. Like you can talk to them about your interest in um, different fields. Uh, they're all very cool people, very chill people. And they're very, very supportive people. They really understand. They've, they've done this for years, right? And so they really understand uh, a student in and out. You can ask them anything. So I feel like it was very, very easy for me to network with my professors. And it should be for anybody, as long as, you know, you just shoot them an email and you're like, hey, can we talk? And, and they'll understand anything and everything, most, most of the time. Professors are great at NYU, really good. Great question and even better answer. I think it's uh, a lot of initiative that really gets you far in a college environment. And that's a tip for anyone applying or even going this year. Super. So the thing is, uh, yeah, just continuing on the fair and other resources at the fair, it's not just universities and admissions officers. We also have educators and people who are uh, conducting research with high school kids. Uh, there's Steven Turban from Lumiere who will be there. There's, there's another American firm which does uh, training in AI. It's called futureschool.ai. They'll be there. So uh, you can spend time learning about opportunities you could build your resume with. For instance, plan your summer by participating in some of these uh, courses, uh, research, internships and volunteering sort of activities. Uh, we don't see more questions coming in for Udhav, Samira or me. Um, Yaksha sent me a message saying, is a college fair also for master's program? Uh, unfortunately not. We will be starting a grad school version soon, but this one is mostly for, yeah, it is pretty much for undergrad. For high school kids. Manya, you have a question. Is there more questions? Manya. Oh, yeah. Hi, Udhav. I had a question uh, about your personal essay in your common app. Uh, mm -hmm. So, how 
how difficult did you find it choosing a topic because the main the main problem i've been having lately is that i i'm finding it hard to choose a topic on what to write about because it feels like then it feels like your application kind of weighs over to that side of your application and it kind of puts too much emphasis on that particular aspect of you so how did you overcome that while writing it and ensure that the rest and other aspects of your application didn't get you know bogged down by it i mean honestly choosing one was very very tough uh, uh about your point about um you know the essay affecting the other activities i didn't quite understand that like what do you mean like do you think your essay is um, not talking about any of your other activities or like i i quite i didn't understand that because you can talk about anything in your essay as long as like yeah so what what i meant by that was like for example in your application you wrote about basketball so mm-hmm. do you think that that it like your application started emphasizing basketball more than say your community service or something like that because you wrote about it in your main essay no not really so i wouldn't look at an essay from that perspective basketball is rather it's not what the basketball i'm not trying to show that i'm good at basketball that's the last thing i'm trying to do with essay rather what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to use basketball as a medium to show different personality traits or things about me that uh i did not show elsewhere in the essay right so it's it's not like uh i'm trying to show through my common app essay that you know i'm a really good basketball player it's rather i'm trying to show that uh you know basketball through basketball i learned that you know a how to overcome failures i had like a failure and then you know i i had this whole personal growth journey and then overcame that fa- failure and b that how i'm a say a sociable person because you know i networked with these guys and so on and it's it's more like i formed a community with these guys so i think about like for me basketball was more like the vehicle to sort of um show all those states about myself rather than the date itself if you forget what i mean yeah it wasn't really more yeah. about it wasn't much about the activity it was more about the relationships and the learning and the growth so that's that's another you know tip here like you could actually pick one of your main activities and the reason you like it is not just because you're good at it it could be because they, it offered a learning moment or you realize something about yourself and relationships through that see at, at the end of the day you have to keep in mind that you're joining a college community and there's these friends and peers and seniors and professors and academic support staff and other advisors you'll constantly connect with uh, and that's one place in your application where you can express who you will be as an individual connected to that organization again you don't have to be the extroverted uh, person uh, udhav is so this essay may or may not be your topic but in general getting to answer questions which uh, reflect that relationship building aspect is always a good idea do you have any follow up manya you have your hand raised for a second yeah manya you had a question go ahead no no that's about is my hand still raised oh i'm sorry no no it's, no, it's good no it's good. Yeah. so yeah i mean don't really if you're thinking about using a particular activity don't really think that your that activity is going to you know be the focus of your application is going to overshadow it just sort of use that activity as like Uh, a vehicle rather than see a very bad sport sport essay is like you know i was um, um i was not, i wasn't that good at say soccer cricket basketball or whatever and then i trained and i really became better and then there was an injury and i couldn't play and then i bounced back and you know i scored the final goal and i won the tournament for the school so that's a terrible essay because we read those every day i mean there's kids writing those essays but if you can link it up with something else uh, it's always unique and memorable there are several uh, gray areas about writing essays or topics that can be ignored because they need not really they could be very personal but they might not really have an impact so again choosing topics become 
really uh, important. So fine, I think this has been a fantastic one hour. It's uh, I know it's super late for you, what, 2 a.m. or something. But yeah, it's really late. <laughs> and thanks for being so energetic, even at this time, because I know sure. uh, I would be phased out by now if I was in your place. Uh, so Samira, thanks again for uh, joining us. And we'll get you on this panel very soon with your uh, common app to <laughs> Thank you for having me. Take care, everyone. So I'm going to leave my email IDs. And Udhav, if you want to leave your email ID behind. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did. Feel free to do that. Well, thank you, guys. Um, just reach out to me on my email if you have any questions. All right. Have a, have a good day. Bye. Bye, Udhav. Thanks.